hope you're doing okay. Um, hope everybody is doing fine. Hope you had a good day and hope everything is going well and okay for you. Uh, this is Truth and Love Video Ministry and I'm glad that uh, you're here. Glad. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Um, if you would if this has been helpful to you at all, or if you think it would be an encouragement to someone else, um, we would we'd like for you to um, like, to comment, to share um, our videos, and so that we can we can work together and to to reach our community for the gospel of Jesus Christ for God's glory. Uh, we have a passion and a zeal for for God's word for His truth, and uh, we want to see uh, folks saved. We want to see God glorified. And um, we want to work together to be able to do that. So just like always, the floor is yours. If you, if you want to talk about anything, if you have any questions, you want to talk about church-related issues, you want to talk about uh, Bible verse, scripture, any questions, um, I would be glad to, to talk to you about anything that you would like to, to discuss uh, related to those issues and uh, see what's on your mind, see what you've been thinking. Um, anything in the news anything in the world going on that you would like to discuss uh, maybe we can look at it from a Christian perspective uh, so the, so the floor is yours chime in and and we'll stop whatever we're doing and we'll talk about uh, the things that you'd like to talk about and that that would be fantastic if you would like prayer um, all you have to do is type me I'll see that hopefully during the video and if you watch the video later I'll see that and I can pray for you then um, just want you know you to know and, and those who those in our community or maybe if you're not in our community but especially those in our community want, want them to know that there there's folks out there that will pray for them so um, if you would like prayer all you have to do is type me and uh, we'll see that and we'll, we'll pray for you um, yeah if, if you do not have a, a reading plan a Bible reading plan we're going to continue to, to encourage you and share with you what we're doing. We are following along in, in the Bible reading plan called um, To the Word 2020. And so you can uh, look it on Facebook. You can look it up on, on Google. Um, if you have a Bible app, you can look under plans. You can look up um, To the Word 2020 and try to find that plan. Uh, the Bible app that I use is Version. if you want to use that excuse me um, that's a good one to use you can read you can listen uh, you can listen and follow along so there's all kinds of ways that you can get into God's Word and, and follow along this plan the, the reason that we're suggesting this plan is because um, there's some teachers that we enjoy and that we appreciate and they they're putting this together for their church and and their their wider um, audience if, if you will uh, folks that other folks around the country and around the world that that appreciate their ministry um, so there, there's people right now as we speak following this same uh, Bible reading plan and we're doing it together and if you if you do decide to use this um, Bible reading plan let us know uh, let, uh, encourage us by letting us know that you're you're following that Bible reading plan uh, it it'd be good accountability and it'd be very encouraging for us to know that that you are uh, joining with us in, in reading God's Word. So it's To the Word 2020. Uh, look it up and, and join us uh, to do that. So by request, we are continuing to go through um, selected scriptures from Hebrews. And uh, tonight we are looking at Hebrews um, chapter, chapter 4 verse 14 through chapter 5 verse 10. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I always like to read this verse. Um, I call this truth in love video ministry um, because in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 it says but speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in all aspects who is the head even Christ so we're, God is truth Jesus is truth his gospel is the truth and we want to know the truth and we want to share the truth and, and uh, Paul tells us in Ephesians to, to speak that truth and in love and so that's that's our goal that's what we want to do is speak that truth and in love and um, because it's it's the only truth that can that has all the answers to our 
ultimate problem and all the rest of our problems our ultimate problem being sin um, being under the wrath of God and, and falling short of his glory that's our ultimate issue that's our ultimate problem and the truth of God's word is that Jesus came to rescue and he can rescue you if you'll turn from your sins and put your trust in, in him put your trust in Jesus Christ and that's the truth that we want to share with our community and um, and then when we do that when we respond and, and when God has saved us we want to continue that uh, pursuit of Jesus and grow up into him in all aspects uh, because God is God is in control he's sovereign over all things and uh, he can he can teach us and we can grow up in, in all things in Jesus Christ and learn learn about um, his world and his kingdom and what he's doing and through scripture and, and the Holy Spirit as he teaches us so um, that that's that's where we're going that's that's the um, uh, where we're coming from and I uh, wanted to share that with you so without any further ado and and of course let me know that you're watching uh, if you have any questions if you want to talk about anything we'll talk about um, what's going on in the world any questions that you might have I'd love to open up a conversation with you guys so keep that in mind if you want to do that um, if if this is an encouragement to you I'd love for you to share and uh, join us as we reach our community so without any further ado we're going to look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 starting at verse 14 through chapter 5 verse 10 and um, I'm not going to I'm not going to read it we're just going to go uh, kind of verse by verse and, and hit some highlights um, as we go through this section so if we start in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 it says since then so there at the onset we have to stop right there because anytime you see words uh, phrases like this um, or like here chapter 6 verse 1 therefore anytime there's a therefore you want to know what the therefore is there for so you have to read what came before it to know the context of what's going on um, as the foundation of what he's speaking about next and the same thing is true with with verse 14 here when he says since then so it's it's like a it's like a transition uh, a, a new a new thought that's related to what has been being said previously so we we can't go any further until we get the context and we we kind of know what's going on and lay that foundation uh, which will make what we learn about in verses 14 15 and 16 before we even get to chapter 5 it will make it more glorious if we can um, kind of get the context of, of where he's coming from before we read uh, read on any further in our in our text tonight so to get the context I want to go back um, to chapter 3 starting in verse 12 right in the middle of the chapter that's where I wanted to start to kind of get the context and listen to what he says he says take care brethren lest there should be any one of you an evil unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God but encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called today that word today is a theme here in chapter 3 and chapter 4 it's pretty amazing but he says as long as as long as it's still called today encourage one another <clears throat> lest one any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin verse 14 for we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end so this, this there's evidence that we have been partakers of Christ if we hold fast and if we're holding fast all the way to the end that's evidence that we have been partakers and we're in Christ and then where does he go next he quotes the Old Testament scripture when he says um, today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me and so I was reading uh, before I even got to to chapter 3 I was reading in chapter 4 and he was talking about they he was talking about they and I was like well who were the they that he's talking about 
And this is where it starts. He says, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. So what he goes on next to say is, and, I, and I'm going to try not to uh, make this introduction so long. Uh, we just want to get the highlights to get the context. But where he goes to next is he goes to Moses and Israel as, as God brought them out of Egypt and was leading them into the promised land. But they did not enter the rest, the rest of the promised land that um, that God had, had promised them because of verse 19, uh, they did not enter because of their unbelief. So they were promised rest, they were promised deliverance out of Egypt, and they were promised rest, but because of their unbelief, they did not enter into that rest. And then starting in chapter 4, therefore, of course, and we've already read what the therefore is there for, let us fear lest while we while a promise remains of entering his rest so there's there was that promise to Israel that um, there is there's a rest we can enter into and it was the land and we looked at that um, we looked at that land promise uh, as as a promise of rest uh, a good number of videos ago I believe but but we've talked about that before but there uh, chapter 4 verse 1 says there is a promise that remains of entering his rest so that wasn't the only one and there's there's a promise of entering into rest that remains so it, it's not over it's not done with there is there is something else um any one of you should seem to have come short of it. So, so here he goes again. The author of Hebrews he begins it in in twelve, chapter three, verse twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. You know he's giving this warning, and here he is in chapter chapter four, verse one. He's giving this warning again. Let us fear lest any one of you should seem to have come short of it. So come short of what? A promise remains. Of entering his rest so we've, we've still got a promise to enter in his rest but there's this warning here um, um, unless unless someone falls short of it and in verse 2 um, for indeed we have had the good news preached to us so they had the gospel preached to them and he and he says just as they also who were the they well, in the context, we just read the they are Israel that God delivered out of Egypt. Egypt, They had, as the author here says, they had the good news preached to them just as we did. But the word they heard didn't profit them. And why didn't it profit them? It says the word that they had did not unite with faith so they did not enter because of unbelief when they heard the word the good news that was preached to them it did not unite with faith so with us who are partakers in Christ who who will hold fast as evidence will hold fast hold firm um, till the end of this assurance when we heard the good news preached to us it united with faith and then verse 3 for we who have believed enter that rest and then he goes on to um, the other places where God talks about rest um, and he makes this argument here he says just as he said as I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest they the Israelites although his works were finished from the foundation of the world so when did that take place for he has thus said somewhere concerning the seventh day and God rested on the seventh day from all of his works and again in this passage passage they shall not enter my rest since therefore it remains for some to enter it and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience so those he's speaking to those 
folks again, those who heard the good news where it did not unite with faith, they did not enter the rest, enter rest because of their unbelief. But he says, since therefore it remains, there's that promise again, it remains for some yet to enter it. So there's there's more folks in the future. Uh, this promise still remains that uh, there will be some to enter his rest. There will be some who believe, some who will be partakers in Christ that, that will enter this rest. So this, this promise still remains. And... Um, and, and Jesus, you know, God finished his work in six days and then rested on the seventh. And listen to this. Here comes that word again that I brought up at the very beginning. Verse 7 of chapter 4, he says, And again, um, yeah, he again fixes a certain day. So God, God worked six days, rested on the seventh, but he, he finished he finished all his work it's it, it was all done from the foundation of the world it's all done and he again fixes a certain day so the in in the law according to their tradition according to God's command they were to work six days and then rest on the seventh um, but now he 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 has fixed a certain day for um for us to rest for for those whom this promise remains he has fixed a certain day for us to rest and what is that day which day of the week is it that he has fixed for us to rest if you get a chance look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7 he says that day in which that we are supposed to rest is it is it Saturday the original Sabbath is it Sunday the day that we as Christians now um, go to church and worship Wh which day is it chapter 4 verse 7 says he again fixes a certain day today that's what he says today remember in chapter 3 verse 13 but encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called today now in verse 7 of chapter 4 he has fixed a certain day which is today saying through David after so long a time just as been just as has been said before and he quotes the same Old Testament verse he says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts so today is the day of salvation today if you hear his voice don't harden your heart today is the day you can enter into that rest and then tomorrow when it becomes today you will be in his rest and then the day after that will be today and you will be in his rest so we we complete our work and that's what he says um verse 9 there remains therefore a sabbath rest for the people of god verse 10 for the one who has entered his rest as himself also rested from his works as God did from his so when we enter that Sabbath rest which is today we end our work we end our striving we we give up we die to ourselves of trying to to please God and 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 enter into heaven of our own accord trying to keep trying to be a good person trying to keep the law whatever we do nail ourselves to the cross of of idolatry of our of our own selves being our own god we we die to that we end our works and we rest on the works of jesus christ we enter into that sabbath and then tomorrow when it becomes today we'll be in the sabbath rest which is jesus and then he begins in verse 11 just like he started with chapter 4 and as we started in chapter 3 verse 12 13 and 14 he goes back at it he is he is so concerned about his his um countrymen because this letter is is addressed to the hebrews he, he is so concerned with his fellow countrymen that he's reflecting back on israel whom god delivered out of egypt 
and he made a he 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 made a promise uh, of a promised land, a place of rest, but because of their unbelief, they don't they did not enter, and he does not want them to fall, as their ancestors, their forefathers did, and not enter this rest that has that has remained that is open because of their unbelief so chapter 4 verse 11 he says let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall through following the same example of disobedience he he remembers he remembers Israel and he remembers how they did not enter that rest because of disobedience. And he does not want his generation, his fellow countrymen, to, to miss out, to come short of making it to that rest. So he's, he has sent out so many warnings so far in these verses that we've read. And then here comes a famous verse that many of us are familiar with. After he's warned us. He's warned us about um, our belief, where we are in our hearts. He says, verse 12, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So, God sees, his word judges, let's not fall short. That's what he's calling us to. That's what he's warning us to. So, with, with, those, with those warnings in mind, um, and with this, with this encouragement to... Um, it says hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm unto the end so we have that encouragement and we have this warning as we roll into our passages chapter 4 verse 14 since then and we've discussed everything that we've discussed thus far the, the warnings the encouragement the rest that remains and promise to those who will enter in, who will believe, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. We have a confession. Those who believe, we have a confession. And let's hold fast to that confession. For we do not have a high priest, which is, he just said, is Jesus, the Son of God, who cannot sympathize with our weakness. And you remember all these warnings that he gives us? Be careful not to fall short. Um, take care, my brethren, lest there should be any one of you. Um, let us fear, lest... Um, lest we come short. So we, we have these um, sincere warnings from the author of Hebrews. And now we have some encouragement for, for those of us who, who are holding firm to that, to that assurance, to the, um, that confession, um, to those who believe in, in Christ. And as, we, as he says in verse 11, he says, let us therefore be diligent. So as, as we're moving forward, holding fast and, and being diligent, he says, we do, not have, we do not have a high priest, Jesus, who cannot sympathize with our weakness because there's going to be temptation. There's going to be trials. There's, there's going to be heartache. There's going to be hard times. But we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but one who has been tempted in all things as we are yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore draw near. So we have this confession. We're holding fast to it. Now he's encouraging us 
and exhorting us to draw near. Draw near to who? Draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. Whoa, wait a second. Back in the day when they when they had the temple and um, they were practicing the sacrifices, there was only, only the high priest could go into the temple of the Holy of Holies and make the sacrifice on behalf of uh, people, uh, on behalf of the nation. But now, after Jesus has, has been through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, after he has um, uh, finished his work, and his work was accepted, as we're going to see here in just a few minutes as we go through chapter 5. Um, we can now, with confidence, confidence in Jesus, our high priest, we can go draw near to the throne, the mercy seat. We can draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace when? To help in time of need. So he has such a concern. He has such a concern for his fellow countrymen, for, for the readers uh, of this. Um, you know, the, the book of Hebrews is, is about teaching us and showing us and showing the audience, the original audience, that Jesus is greater. Um, you know, and here we, we're seeing that, you know, you, you celebrated the Sabbath. But Jesus is now our Sabbath rest. You had a high priest, but now Jesus is our high priest. One who can sympathize. One who brings us and allows us to draw near with confidence to the throne of grace where we can find mercy. And he gives us these warnings because he's reflecting on Israel and how they fell and how they did not enter the rest because of their unbelief. He knows how difficult this life is so therefore he says draw near for mercy and grace because there will come time there will come times of when you will need mercy and grace um, to find help in in that time of need I'm sorry I didn't articulate that any better but he encourages us with with this awesome news that has never been offered before to to anyone and and now it's offered offered to those who will believe in him and be partakers in Jesus Christ now let's look at this next section and it shouldn't take as long um, because it's it's, uh, the first part especially is pretty straightforward Uh, he is going to begin to um, tell us more about uh, Jesus as the high priest being being a, the greater high priest being a better high priest um, verse 5 uh, chapter 5 verse 1 for every high priest so we're reflecting on who who they were for every high priest taken from among men is appointed on behalf of men in the things pertaining to God so these high priests they were men they were taken from among men um, to, to serve men and they were appointed by men okay so everything about that high priest is happening down here on earth they were appointed by men and they were uh, appointed and taken out of from among men so they were men themselves to do the things per- pertaining to God in order to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins so that was their job verse 2 he can deal gently with the ignorant and misguided since he himself also is beset with weakness he's a man just like them so he can deal gently with them and because of it he is obligated to offer sacrifices for sin as for the people and so also for himself so this high priest being a man himself had to offer sacrifices not just for the people but for himself as well in verse 4 and no one 
no one takes the honor to himself but receives it when he is called by God even as Aaron so Aaron was called and his family to be the high priest and the high priestly position was to be handed down generation after generation um, within the same family and uh, this was you know this was to come down through Aaron and this glory this honor that they received was not taken upon themselves but it was given to them they received it because it was given to them by God so now we're going to look at our our new high priest our better high priest verse 5 so also Christ the Messiah did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest so he's he meets that qualification but he who said to him thou art my son today I have begotten thee so there there you have that um that family line Jesus is in that family line um, to which qualifies him to have this position and now verse 6 just as he says also in another passage thou art a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek so Christ did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest because number two God called him just like it says in in verse 4 um, no one takes the honor to himself but receives it when he is called by God here Jesus is called by God when he says thou art a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek so he's God has called out Christ and he has that family line so he qualifies and he did not seek his own glory but it was given to him by God the Father now verse 7 in the days of his flesh so when he was here on this earth he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death and what does that make you think of he offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears to the one able to save him from death that reminds me of the time that Jesus spent in the garden where he sweat drops of blood and and he prayed and he cried out to the father uh, father if it be thy will let this cup pass from me but if not thy will be done and to read on he says and he was heard because of his piety piety here is in in this context uh, we often think of piety maybe in a negative way because we um, uh, we we use it that way we we see someone who who maybe is acting hypocritically or or better than uh, better than they they act better than they um, or they think they're better than they really are uh, we call them they're acting piously they think they're pious they you know they think they're religious uh, there's a lot of negative connotations that we use those uh, that word in but in here in this context piety means um, uh, has a positive connotation um, it, it literally means um, God fearing Jesus honored God that he obeyed him completely and because of his piety his his religiosity because of his um, his excellent morality his, his pure morality um, because of his piety he was heard so th there's two suggestions offered up here for this um, he offered up a prayers and supplications with a loud crying um, and with tears to the one who was who was able to save him from death and then he was heard because of his piety so there's two suggestions offered up here uh, when Jesus uh, was going to the garden um, he says that uh, I think it's in Matthew where he says uh, my, my heart is sorrowful even unto death so there it is suggested suggested that Jesus felt like he was going to to die there in the garden and uh, because his his heart um, 
he, he was so sorrowful even unto death and that his his prayers were heard because of his piety and he was he was saved uh, from from dying actually dying there in the garden um, you know there's there's no verses about that it's just a suggestion that's offered another suggestion is that um, his his prayer was answered um, because he was eventually raised from the dead um, he, he did not ultimately um, remain dead and and he didn't die spiritually he didn't die the spiritual death either but he was he was raised from the dead so there's there's at least two options there that um, you can think and meditate upon for verse 7 and then verse 8 although he was a son he learned obedience from the things which he suffered and that hits our ear funny because we we think it we know that Jesus was 100% God and he was also 100% man so if Jesus being 100% God how can he how can he learn anything does is is God not all knowing um, so how does he learn anything and the best and I probably will not explain this um, as, as well as it should be explained um, because uh, just because my mind can't comprehend and then translate uh, what I do understand in such a way that it can be helpful so, but I'm going to try to do the best that I can um, so when Jesus before Jesus came in the flesh of course he was you know with the father um, and so when he was with the father before he came to earth in the flesh he understood he had the knowledge of what what being thirsty meant or he had the knowledge and uh, and understood what being hungry meant but it wasn't until he came and and lived in the flesh that he learned what being thirsty meant and and learned what being hungry meant because it happened to him and then so the same thing is true here when he was with the father before you know they have interdependency upon one another and um, and Jesus also you know he, he he says he does what he only does what he um, hears or the father tell him to do or and says what the, he hears the father say uh, so he has he's always obedient um, he, he's always submissive and um, and he has this dependence upon, especially in his flesh, uh, the Father and the Spirit. Um, but it wasn't until he, he, he came to earth and, and was in the flesh that he experienced and, and learned obedience. He, he knew what it was, and he understood it completely, perfectly. But it wasn't until he, he was in the flesh, although he was a son, he, he learned obedience just like he learned uh, he experienced thirst he experienced hunger he experienced obedience in the flesh from and, and I hope that I explained that okay and I hope that I was accurate to um, so anybody out there can offer their suggestions as well um, and, and help me out if they would like that would be fantastic because th this is a difficult passage but um, that's that's the way that um, I'm seeing it right now. Um, so he he learned obedience from the things which he suffered, and then verse nine, and having been made perfect. There again, there's another one of those those hard phrases that's hard for us to grasp because we Jesus 100% God. He was God before. He will always be God, and and God is is perfect. Jesus is perfect. He is without sin. He did not sin. So, so what does that mean? He became perfect, um, or he having been made perfect. Uh, really, uh, you can look at the word perfect there as as complete. So, when when Jesus finished his work, uh, the the work was complete. It was it, it was um, perfectly complete. Um, if it was. He, he, he filled it up he, he completed it it was finished it was perfect um, not as in the not as in 
you have something that is is flawless or not flawless but but perfect as in completed um so so all his task everything that he was to do um having been uh made perfect or or complete so i think that's the way we can we can understand that here he became so having been made perfect everything completed he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation being designated by god as the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. so there's the wonderful news right there to everyone who was obeying him which is a excuse me of course again evidence of being in Christ those who obey him he is the source he is the source of eternal salvation and what is what is that act of obedience that that work of God is belief they did not enter they did not enter his rest because of unbelief and the author here of Hebrews is is not wanting the reader to miss that and fall short he wants us to to fear to have a fear about us lest we come short because Jesus Christ is is the source of our eternal salvation enter into that rest and you do that by repenting turning from your sins and trusting in him trusting in in his perfect work in his completed work on the cross and God raised him from the dead he got his his prayer was heard he was raised from the dead God accepted that sacrifice and his promise is good his promise is sure and we can have assurance as he speaks of um, here in in um, in verse 14 for we have for we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end so take hold of Christ and hold fast to that assurance to the end um, I hope that was helpful to you I hope you were encouraged and um, I'd love to be able to pray for you as well and so if if you're still with us um, if you would join us in, in sharing the our videos uh, join with us as we try to reach our community uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with the truth of his word um, if, if you would like the videos uh, comment let us know that you're watching we really appreciate your support we enjoy spending time with you um, and if I could pray for you I'd love to be able to do that so before we close let me go ahead and, and, and pray and we'll wrap things up father we're so grateful for your word and um, will you help us as we strive to understand what uh, you're teaching us and what you would have us to know but what we do know and what is very clear is that Jesus is um, our better Sabbath, our Sabbath rest. He is our better high priest and he is our source of eternal salvation. So, Father, we we worship the lamb that was slain. We thank you, Jesus, for uh, what you did on the cross. Thank you, Father, for your plan of salvation, for, for choosing us for giving us repentance and giving us faith and for the rest that we can find from our labors. Father, I pray for our community that you would um, help us open our eyes. Would you save souls that we may, um, that your kingdom may grow. Um, Father, it's, it seems to us to be a good thing when politics is going our way when when crime is down when you know police are doing uh, an excellent job and their numbers are good um, when when our country's flag is flying high and everything is peaceful that seems to us as right 
but Father, I I know that just as we can think we're good people and miss out and come short of your rest, we can think peace politically or because there's no crime or no war that life is good and that you're a blessing but father those things are meaningless in the eyes of eternity unless we acknowledge you as Lord so father work in us to reach our community that our community may turn to you as Lord and then we can praise you for the peace and the rest that you bring to us and I pray all these things in Jesus name amen all right I really appreciate you watching thank you for joining me thank you for your support uh, remember that Jesus is King go live in that victory and let's continue to go out there and proclaim the gospel I hope to see you soon